Hello friends, welcome to one more episode of STEER by Dr. Amdekar's team. Today, I will be talking on etiology of recurrent diseases. I am Dr. Tushar Manyar, head of the Department of Pediatrics at Nanavati Max. And in the next 10 minutes, we will discuss the etiology of recurrent diseases. Recurrent diseases means diseases which occur again or again and again. That means multiple times. Normally, a disease occurs when there is breakdown in the defense of the body. Now, we must look at what are the factors which can cause repeated breakdown and cause a particular condition. So, our major mechanism for defense is anatomy of the body. So, let's look at some examples where a faulty anatomy will lead to recurrent diseases. The common condition that we come across is vasicourethral reflux. Vasicourethral reflux, I'm sorry. That means that urine, instead of being unidirectional, flows in the opposite direction and that leads to recurrent urinary tract infection. Similarly, a patient who has a sinus opening in an inappropriate way affects its drainage and thereby leads to recurrent sinusitis. You can also have a newborn with recurrent pneumonia who has an abnormal anatomical lobe of the lung in the form of what is known as CCAM. Next, we look at the physiology. We need the body parts to function appropriately in order to get proper defense from our environment and the organisms. If the secretions in the lungs are thicker than usual and the clearance gets affected, one can land up with multiple recurrent plugging and lead to recurrent pneumonias. This is what exactly happens in cystic fibrosis. On the other hand, there can be certain conditions like which affect your mucociliary clearance and thereby lead to improper clearance of the mucus and the debris of the lung and result in recurrent pneumonias as it happens in a condition called as cartaginous syndrome. And we all know when we talk of, in, talk of recurrent diseases, we think about recurrent infections first and so the immunity of the body has to be appropriate to fight the environmental uh, germs which are present. So conditions which cause lower immunity, classically known as primary immunodeficiency disorders, now called inborn errors of immunity, result in certain conditions whereby the body is not able to protect against germs which are normally present and that leads to recurrent infection. Primary immunodeficiency infections are classically unusual in nature and there are unusual germs, it could be in unusual places and it can result in recurrent infections. On the other hand, if somebody acquires HIV or AIDS, it leads to secondary immunodeficiency and these children or adults are also at risk of recurrent infection. Now immunity has to be in appropriate manner. Just as low immunity is a problem, excess immunity is also a problem. That means, for example, in asthma, there is hyperreactiveness or hyperimmunity in the sense like an angry person who gets aggravated with slightest of stimulus, these lungs get aggravated and land up with wheezing and breathlessness even with the slightest of trigger. Similarly, patient with skin allergies can land up with recurrent urticaria or even angioedema. Now, we talked about immunity which is low or immunity which is high. But we must also remember that sometimes immunity when it goes haywire, that means instead of attacking outside triggers, it starts attacking body's normal cells. And this is what we classically call autoimmunity. Whenever there is autoimmunity, there can be recurrent conditions like arthritis, you have systemic onset GIA and there is SLE. All these conditions are recurrent in nature and the cause of them being autoimmunity. 
Here again, there is another class of uh, diseases which are called auto-inflammatory, which also works on similar principles and the patient can come with recurrent fevers or various other recurrent symptoms. Here we must understand that conditions where the organism is not completely clear from the body, for example tuberculosis, where a person does not take treatment properly or if the treatment is inadequate and the disease is not cleared and it comes back again, we don't typically call it a recurrent condition, we would rather call it a relapse of the condition. Similarly, in an enteric fever, if the salmonella is sitting in the gallbladder and it comes, fever comes back, we would call it a relapse of the condition. Similarly, inborn errors of metabolism can sometimes create situations wherein a person is normal in between or near normal in between and in presence of stress such as a physical stress, hypoglycemia, etc. can land up with a particular symptom again and again. Classic example being Gilbert disease where an apparently normal person lands up with indirect hyperbilirubinemia with in response to a physical stress or fasting. On the other hand, there are certain more serious conditions like for example mitochondrial diseases which can, get, which can precipitate in presence of fever, infection or any other stress and otherwise may not be evident and they would come recurrent in a recurrent manner. We still, till now we looked at host conditions which could be responsible for the recurrent conditions. Let us look at some of the environmental factors which can be responsible for recurrent conditions. Classic example being a person who has passive has a, a passive smoking in the family can lead to recurrent allergic conditions in the child or even hyperreactive airway disease. Also we must remember that overcrowding and other situations can lead to repeated uh, relapse or recurrence of a particular given infection. We all know that crowded play groups, schools or daycare centers are a cause for recurrent viral infection. Now we have to be careful before we start thinking about recurrent diseases under this category because here each time the virus which may be different and anyway we know that certain number of viral infections, mild viral infections are common in childhood and hence we need not label them under the recurrent infection category and start investigating them. We must also pay attention to different etiology for a given symptom. Even if suppose anemia is recurrent, there could be multiple etiologies for the same. One can have ongoing losses which if not picked up even after treatment there could be recurrence of anemia. There could be a precipitating factor in a hemolytic anemia like G6PD deficiency where if the person is exposed to an oxidative agent they will land up with G6PD deficiency again. It is also interesting that a common uh, same symptom can have different etiologies and one needs to get into detail of a recurrent condition. A patient with recurrent abdominal pain who is otherwise thriving well may have recurrent abdominal pain but mostly we will attribute it to constipation or functional pain. But if that child is not growing well and has recurrent abdominal pain or has weight loss and recurrent abdominal pain, then we would start thinking in terms of inflammatory bowel disease or even tuberculosis with if it is with pain and loose motion and constipation which are alternating and recurrent. So friends, in all, when we look at etiologies of any recurrent condition, we must look at the background of which defense system of the body is been affected whether the anatomy is affected, physiology is affected and if the immunity is affected. We talked about immunity, if it is low it's a problem, if it is high it is a problem. 
if it is misdirected that means autoimmunity then also it can be a problem we also must think about unregulated immunity as in terms of cancer which has a nasty tendency to have a recurrent condition we must also look at environmental factors being responsible for a recurrent disease i hope we have been able to explain the importance of getting into the details of etiology of recurrent conditions i will end now and the next lecture is by dr hemant joshi nutrition as an underlying denominator of diseases if you like these videos please don't forget to like them subscribe them and keep watching thank you very much